Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to have you here because today is part three of working on my second ever folding knife. We are making a frame lock folding knife and I want to thank today's sponsor for making these videos possible and that is Squarespace, which is a website building platform that I use, that I love, that means that you don't need to know anything about coding to build yourself a beautiful website. And of course, Squarespace is going to be offering you guys 10% off your first purchase and free trial if you go to the link in the description below squarespace.com forward slash forge thank you squarespace ladies and gentlemen it is time to keep cracking on with this really really fun project so on the agenda today is as follows we've already profiled this we need to get the profile in the blade and the profile in our spacer so that we have good starting place to work with. And then we're gonna work on sorting out and laying out the rest of the stuff that we need to do to it. And so it is back into the grinding room for a little more fiddling with the abrasive belts. It's been actually a little while since I've done any filming because I did some final design work working out what it is that I'm gonna do on this piece and where. I inverted my image so I could work out what was happening on the insides. I've worked out what's happening on the top. It made me realize that I am just so pleased that I'm not an engineer, because this is complicated stuff, thinking about how stuff's gonna work, and I know I made a lot of mistakes. So to all you ladies and gentlemen that walk over bridges and go inside buildings every day without the things falling down, right atop your head, be very glad. But it was not me that designed them. Anyway, self-deprecation aside, this thing is gonna be awesome, no matter what failure as I make. And uh, speaking of making, I really, really, really want to get to it, but I am terrifyingly nervous that I'm going to make a mistake. I got these pieces super glued together right now. I still can't work out what the next step is. Like, the best next step. You know, I can think of places to start. I, uh, I can think of places to start. What I can't think of is what is the best place to start. Sadly, what I do know, probably going to be best to at least start. So let's start. Right, so I trammed up the mill and I discovered something. <laughs> Interesting, the more you learn about tramming and getting things level and square and neat, the better you get at spotting when things aren't. This is 11.3 millimeters in thick, and here it's 10.77. Seven. There is 0 0.6 millimeters in difference in squareness to the table. This, ladies and gentlemen, again is another perfect learning opportunity for all of us. Buy once, cry once. I bought the cheapest mill vice I possibly could. Okay, maybe not the possibly, maybe not the cheapest vice I could possibly buy. But this was a cheap mill vice, and this thing across that six inch length is 0 0.6 millimeters out of level. And that is just so bad. If, is it gonna affect us too much right now? No, not really, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I do all my work on top of this, and now that we've cleaned across the top, it's gonna be ready for us to super glue to it, and for us to clamp to it, knowing that this shell mill is perfectly square, because we trammed the nod, we trammed the tilt. Now, I've been struggling to make stuff flat and square and proper since I started milling, and I always assumed that it was my own ineptitude. It likely was, but after I spent so much time tramming this thing, and getting it, okay, maybe not to the level of accuracy at all, by any stretch of the imagination, that so many of you guys that are watching would be able to get it to, but at least getting it a hell of a lot better and verifying it. Well, that gives me a little comfort that I was fighting something. I was fighting the cheapest vice ever 
and its lack of quality. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I make this mistake so often still, but buy once, cry once. Buy the good quality stuff. Don't get the cheap stuff, because you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna cry thrice. You're gonna cry the first time you bought it because you didn't want to buy it anyway. You're gonna cry when it messes up your work and makes it so much more difficult to do what it is that you need to do. And you're gonna cry when you finally go, okay, let's get the good quality one. I just ordered myself a good quality vice, really reputable brand, and hopefully that, as well as my slowly, 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 but surely increasing repertoire of knowledge is gonna mean that I can do better work. Let's start working working on this repertoire of knowledge. Let's get back to the folding knife. Woo! There we go. Buy once, cry once. Somebody make up a saying for that. Buy cheap what? If you buy once and you cry once, buy but cheap, buy again next week. Oh! oh my goodness, I'm just making my. Hey Alec, I've got a great idea. Why don't you buy yourself an automatic center punch? You know what, Alec? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna buy myself. I'm gonna buy myself an automatic center punch as a little treat. Right! I am now going to center drill the pivot hole. I'm not gonna finalize the pivot hole. I'm gonna do that with a reamer, but I am gonna center drill it. I'm gonna mark the zero. I'm gonna drill it with a three millimeter drill. Then, right at the end, because I don't want to destroy the super glue bond first. I don't know, do I have any reasoning for it? I wanna do it right at the end. I'm gonna go back to my zero, which is gonna be over that hole, and we are going to counter bore one millimeter down with a 10 millimeter end mill because I want to make a bronze washer to act as a bearing and I want that to sit in there a millimeter, stick out 0.2 millimeters so that it touches onto our steel. So we're gonna counter bore with an end mill using the zero from our DRO to find that center once we do all the other ones. Anyway, gotta send a drill in here. Let's turn it on, here we go! Now let's pull this puppy out of here, and we're gonna switch it out for a normal three millimeter drill. Make sure I got a zero here on the DRO. Use a little tap paste. Here we go, nice and gently. So I'm going with the three millimeter as a pilot for the 5.8 millimeter hole that we drilled before reaming it. Beautiful. And back out with the three millimeter bit, and in with the center drill. Now, what is a center drill? Well, you're speaking to the machinist expert, right? you're not. Um, but a center drill is much thicker for much longer, and it's only thin for a very short amount of distance, which means that it's much more rigid. So when you start drilling, this is less likely to wander because it's so well supported. Line this puppy up. And in with the center drill we go. So of course, I only started machining about a year ago. So frankly, I'm really completely new to all of this stuff. And like, this is a world that's so different from anything that I know. And really, I'm new to all of it. You know, I'm very much a beginner in everything that it is that I do, which is really exciting because it means that I have to, I get to experience this wonderful joy of, of making accomplishments in what it is that I know. And it's very exciting. What is also great about it is much like when I visited the casting foundry and you saw me pour 100 kilos, 220 pounds of molten bronze. Wow. Whenever I see the extrapolation of what it is that I've just about discovered how to do. I see somebody pouring, you know, five bronze sculptures, 100 kilos of bronze metal in one go like it's nothing. And whenever I stumble across YouTube videos of machinists making the most incredible stuff, especially right after I stand at this mill and struggle my way through something, or stand at that lathe and struggle my way through something, and get the excitement of just about making something good. And then get my mind blown 
Case in point, have you ever seen ClickSpring's videos on YouTube? I hope you have. Because your mind will be blown if you are yet to discover his incredible videos on home machining and clock making. It is unbelievable. The precision with which he works is just out of this world. And then another person, I'm trying to get to sleep last night, and I think, well, I'm sure some commenters have mentioned A-Bomb79, so let, let me have a look at his videos. Two hours later, I'm still watching his videos, learning a lot, and seeing him machine a nine and a half inch diameter 4140 steel sharp with crazy accuracy, like it's nothing. Picking it up with a, with a sling, it's unbelievable. So if you gain any sort of enjoyment from seeing me stumble my way through stuff and you wanna see some pros nail it, I highly recommend that you check out their channel because they are insane. Problem. I don't think that's sharpenable. No, it's not. Ah. <laughs> ah, yes. Two millimeter drill bits. Small, frail. Try and rely on them to drill one, two, three, four, five holes. And you've only got the one. Smart move. I'm impressed I can even put my clothes on in the morning. That was an ordeal. Okay, so I ended up finishing off those other holes with some number drills from this little cheap number drill tray I have that were pretty close. So I'm just about getting ready to counterbore that 10 millimeter hole for our bronze little washer, but I just wanna first off say how grateful I am to all of you that give me incredible suggestions anytime I stumble my way through any of this stuff. Because of course that's what it is, it's stumbling my way through, and so when I start on the project, I often end up not having a piece of tooling that is perfect for it, and then having to make do. Like that time that I put an R collet in my lathe chuck because I didn't have any collets for the 5C chuck that I do have. That is right, you've never seen it in a video. But when I bought my lathe, it came with this beautiful 5C collet chuck. But you see, I never had any collets for it. I never got around to paying any. Well, after that little uh, situation, not only do I have one collet, I've got a 19 piece set, and I also bought myself a square collet block and a hexagonal collet block so that I can hold things and index to all four sides or six sides as it may be in the mill vise, which means that I can hold round things and index through 90 degrees or through 60 degrees with the hexagon block, which is just fantastic. So slowly but surely I'm tooling up. I also had a little center finder arrive, which I have needed for a long time. And lining up these holes on the center drawer reminded me that I need to get myself a wiggler. Now a wiggler looks a little like this. In fact, it is this. It's just that I'm missing one of the pieces for it. And so I can only uh, use it as an edge finder, but I need the full set. So I. I'm gonna get to counterboring this piece. I just wanted to make sure that I could uh, drop in and say thank you to you guys for helping me out in the comments. Here we go. There we go, we've done the work that we need to do mostly here on this inside. So as with this knife, you know, sometimes you just gotta get stuck in and get to it, you know, put the thinking aside and just start working. And I'm pleased that I did on the knife because we're making progress and tomorrow I'm gonna be able to flip it over, continue working and start cracking on, keeping it as accurate as possible, taking my time where I need to take the time, but being decisive in my actions when I can be. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be decisive in your actions when it comes to building your website because Squarespace has 
so kindly sponsored today's video, and I'm thrilled about it because I want this to be the day that the excuse of I can't build a website is too complicated. There's no way I'd be able to do it. What would I write about? I can't make it right. I want those excuses to go away. Build the website because with Squarespace's incredibly easy to use website building platform, if you make a mistake, you can so easily fix it. They've got an incredible help center to help you along the way and answer any questions you may have. But it is so easy to build a wonderfully interactive website that works great on your phone as well as on your computer that you're probably not even going to need to use their help. You're probably going to get it first time. And so please do go to squarespace.com forward slash forge, build your website, start building your online presence. And be sure to let me know when you do create a website using my link at squarespace.com forward slash forge. I'd be thrilled to see them. Ladies and gentlemen, go build your websites. I can't wait to see you tomorrow as I continue working on this project. It's been a blast. Bye-bye.